Greetings, everyone. We're going to be solving this problem that involves a block of aluminum sitting on the bottom of a swimming pool. And just to be sure, it does tell us that the swimming pool is filled with water. All right, so how are we going to go about this? Hopefully, after you've worked through the first two problems, or you've seen me work through the first two problems, hopefully you're ready to tackle this one on your own. So if you haven't already, now is a great time just to pause the video and try to work through the entire problem on your own. All right, you're back. So hopefully you've solved it, but well, actually, if you're watching, you probably didn't, but that's okay. Either way, you're checking your work or you're trying to figure out how to do this one. Let's work through it together. The plan, well, we've seen in a lot of these that the plan involves drawing a free body diagram and using Newton's second law of motion. And there's the buoyant force equation. And density equals mass over volume. That's come into play a lot. So those have been the usual suspects. So let's see how far we can get with that. Go ahead and draw a free body diagram. In this case, there is a buoyant force. And yes, there is a buoyant force, even though it sank to the bottom. That does not mean that there's zero buoyant force. It just means that the buoyant force wasn't enough to hold it up all by itself. There is weight. And so the weight of the aluminum was greater than the buoyant force. That's why it sank to the bottom. But once it got to the bottom, well, now it's touching the bottom. That means there's a normal force. And so I don't know which one of these two forces is bigger, but I do know that the two of them together is going to be equal to the weight of the aluminum. All right, we'll pick up as our positive y direction. We're going to be solving for the normal force and the buoyant force. And when we use Newton's second law to solve for a force, we should come out with a positive value because we're just solving for the magnitude. All right, so let's go ahead and fill in our Newton's second law equation here. The normal force plus the buoyant force, those are both upward, minus the weight of the aluminum is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. The block was accelerating before, but we're studying it while it's at rest, sitting on the bottom of the pool, so the acceleration is zero. And we don't know much of that yet, but that's okay. We've got that down. Uh, let's see what we can do with this buoyant force equation. Buoyant force is equal to, let's see, the density. Well, it tells us the density of the aluminum is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Are we going to use that density? Absolutely not. We're going to use the density of the fluid. So the density of the fluid is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, not all problems are going to take place in fresh water. Sometimes you'll be in seawater or in air or other fluids, but we have had several problems that have been in fresh water with this density. Times 9.8 meters per second squared times the volume of fluid displaced. Well, in this case, it's fully submerged. The block, that is, is fully submerged. So the volume of fluid displaced does equal the volume of the object. And that was not true in examples one or two. All right, so in this case, the volume of the object is 0 0.50 meters cubed because this is a cubical block of aluminum. So remember the volume equal length times width times height. And so 50 centimeters times 50 centimeters times 50 centimeters. Oh, and 50 centimeters is half a meter or 0 0.5 meters. So we can get our buoyant force from this. 1,000 times 9.8 times 0.5 cubed. And we get 1,225 newtons. And that matches up to the answer up above, which is a good sign. Let's see. Well, we're, we're going to be able to put that into here. We want to find the normal force. All we need is the weight of the aluminum. Let's see, but they don't tell us the weight of the aluminum. But this is pretty similar to problems one and two. We can use this 
here, and we can find the mass of the aluminum equal to the density of the aluminum times the volume of the aluminum. So the mass of aluminum is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Well, let's just let's just take a moment to look at that. If we have 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter, we can multiply by one kilogram per 1,000 grams. And we can also multiply by 100 centimeters per one meter. But that's not going to get us to units, to, to SI units of density. Okay, so this is the density of Al. All right. So that's not going to come out to SI units. The SI units are kilograms per cubic meter for density. So let's see, centimeters cubed and centimeters don't cancel. So we're going to cube that. The cube goes outside the parentheses. So it applies to the 100, to the centimeters, to the 1, to the meters. And we go ahead and plug that in. We get 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter, which we can use down here. 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. And the volume again, 0 0.5. Oop, forgot my unit meters inside the parentheses. So the mass of my good friend Al here, 2,700 times 0.5 cubed, 337.5 kilograms. So we can use that. It's not equal to the weight, but we can use it to find the weight. So the normal force plus 1,225 newtons minus 337.5 kilograms times 9.8 equals zero. And so our normal force comes out here. Let's see, 1225 minus 337.5 times 9.8. So we get negative 2,082. That's on the left side. So we're going to add it to both sides. So we get 2,083 newtons.